Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us today. You know, one of the promises of software-defined storage is simplification. One of the best ways to simplify things is get it down to one, one thing to manage that's in control of all of your storage assets. So that's really the promise, and so we're going to talk to Datacore today about how they uh, fulfill that promise. Joining me on the light board today is Stephen Hunt from uh, Datacore Software. Stephen, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me, George. So uh, why don't we dive into this. What are you guys doing to kind of fulfill that promise? Yeah, so we've rolled out what we call the Data Core One Vision. Okay. Uh, and the goal of Data Core One Vision is just what you said, to get a consolidation of, of kind of the storage aspects that customers and organizations need to be able to deliver you know, data for their, their environment and their, their applications. Okay. Um, so, you know, it, it really starts with what is accessing storage, what is accessing data. So to start with, uh, we have physical servers. And from physical servers evolved to the world of virtualization, right? Sure. And from there, we've had this new paradigm come out in containers. So what Datacore set out to do is make sure that storage can be served to any one of these different types of application hosts, right? Whether it's a physical server, whether it's a virtual host, whether it's a container host, we want to make sure that that you know storage and data can be served to those appropriately. So I don't have to go get a storage system for every single environment that comes down the pipe. Exactly, right. exactly. Today, many organizations have to go down that path. Mm -hmm. Our goal is to make sure that they don't have to do that. Gotcha. They have one vendor to, to be able to help facilitate it. Perfect. Uh, so the other thing about this is there's different ways to connect to, to storage, right? There's different protocols that are in effect. There's different types of storage that ultimately people want. Mm -hmm. There's block storage, right? There's file storage, and there's object storage. And the reality is all of these different types of host have a very different type of storage that they're going to need access to. It really just depends upon what the application is asking for, and ultimately what the uh, the organization needs to fulfill. Okay. So as a result, you could have physical server needing block storage access. Mm -hmm. You could have a virtual instance uh, needing object storage. You could have containers needing access to file storage. Okay. Um, so, but it really depends upon what they they have to have in terms of data services. So just providing storage access mm -hmm. isn't enough. Okay. There's a lot of different things that ultimately our organization needs from a data services standpoint. Okay. There's the need for high availability. There's the need for uh, disaster recovery. Uh, there's the need for high performance storage. Ultimately, it comes down to what does the application need access to? What is it really requiring from a uh, workload standpoint? Right, and, and these could vary. Like physical could need block and file and, and maybe occasionally object, so it could intermix between two, right? Exactly, yeah. and that's the thing. It's always ever-changing. As new workloads come in place, as new applications come in place, the requirements of the organizations ultimately change uh, and evolve ongoing. Right. Now, Underneath this is the aspect of those data services, right? So if I need high availability, if I need disaster recovery, if I need business continuity, if I need backup and recovery, whatever the concept may be, different organizations have different you know, needs for, for different capabilities, sure. but they need to facilitate it across all of these different types of storage, and they need to facilitate it across all of these different types of uh, application requirements. And, and the priorities of each of those can change by organization and by the type of application too, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, the other thing that's in effect is, is really what type of storage are, are you needing? You know, if you need performance, or if you just need availability. Whether it's a primary storage solution, it's a secondary storage solution, uh, again, the intent is for us to be able to provide that capability across all of those different use cases. So, so whether it's performance, availability, even archive. Right, Data Core is going to be able to provide all of those different types of capabilities mm -hmm. across all of the different storage. Now, this is also going to come down to whether this is on-prem or if it's in the cloud. 
And the reality is these workloads are going to dictate a lot of that aspect, right? From a container standpoint, many organizations are going cloud native. Sure. They need a solution that's going to be able to support that capability of delivery model. Um, and so it can be orchestrated ultimately with those solutions. At the same time, they have different application workloads that are going to still be on-prem, mm -hmm. right? That still have some of the traditional requirements of physical virtual environments, block storage, file storage, and object storage, right? But it doesn't ultimately matter. Just being able to facilitate all of these different building blocks of storage requirements across the different facets of what those applications need. And, and also, there, there, won't there be times where they might start in the cloud and want to come back as well? Exactly. So, so a transitory uh, type of nature too. Exactly, so oftentimes there's a connectivity element between the two, right? Mm -hmm. you, many organizations are starting on-prem, that's almost where everyone was. Some applications are built in the cloud to start with, mm -hmm. uh, but then they move back on-prem because of different cost realizations and things of that nature, right? Sure. So providing a solution that allows that transition to happen, whether it's bursting to the cloud, whether it's a migration to the cloud, whether it's coming back from the cloud to on-prem, uh, being able to help facilitate that transition, you know, ultimately gets them where they need to be. Yeah, and I think you know, as I, I one of the things that really occurs to me as I, you kind of draw this out, it, it's a miracle that we could ever get to anything less than twenty storage systems, right? Because there's so many different variables, and each one of these has its own uh, nuances. Well, it, it's absolutely true. Um, if you think about most data centers, uh, at one point in time, they had you know two to three different types of storage systems. Right. Probably ultimately have more. More and more organizations are looking for an effort to consolidate that down. They want to understand ultimately how they can deliver it. And that's where Data Core can provide everything across those different requirements and those needs to deliver all of the management capabilities, to facilitate all of the data storage capability, and ultimately the access to the different applications that require it. So it's one interface into essentially all of this. Exactly, the, the goal for us is to deliver a single management interface. Uh, recently we, we announced Data Core Insight Services. It is the goal and the management plane that's going to get us to that while we continue to deliver all of the different data services across all of the different storage interfaces, across all of the different application workloads. Yeah, and I think what's interesting about software-defined storage is that instead of trying to consolidate the hardware and say, okay, you must use this hardware because it's going to solve all, you, you build the one giant box, so to speak. You say, okay, look, there's different pieces of hardware that work well, but let's put a software layer on top of that so that the human doesn't have to manage those, those different pieces. Exactly, and that's really what Data Core has done from the beginning is allowing underneath that entire plane any type of heterogeneous type hardware mm -hmm. to, to be consolidated and managed and accessed through the data core software uh, management plane. So one of the things I see, Stephen, is people are wanting more direct control over these type of uh, applications. What, what type of uh, interfaces do you guys provide? That's a great question. So we have a, a web front end GUI that allows access both to the uh, server management and storage management uh, functions, mm -hmm. as well as the cloud-based analytics uh, information available to understand ultimately how can you uh, how can you evolve your environment, how can you improve the overall performance of your environment, as well as we have uh, API access. So you know if you need to then script or uh, add into some type of automation process then you can go directly to the APIs without having to go through a, a GUI management component. So I could like script provisioning steps and things like that. Exactly, any of your traditional automation and scripting capabilities will interface directly through that, that public ref, uh, referenceable API. Perfect, okay. So thanks for joining us, Stephen. Thanks for having me, George. So there you have it. One of the promises of software-defined storage is its ability to get down to one. And, and what we typically find is that a lot of software-defined storage get down to one in one area, not the whole uh, environment and what you're seeing here with data core is really a, a, a top to bottom cover everything capability that allows you to get to one no matter what your environment looks like today or what it might evolve to in the future. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us today.